Hey guys, my name is Drew Dimmler. I'm the director of horticulture for the Great State Fair of Texas. And today we're gonna to be talking about one of my very favorite topics, and that's growing citrus. I've been growing citrus here in Texas for a very, very long time. And believe it or not, it's one of the easier fruit trees that you can grow in our area. But there are a few things you need to know to have success. So we're gonna pass along some tips here for you today on how to grow them properly. Today we're in the outside section of the Big Tex Urban Farms, right next to that beautiful Ferris wheel, where we do still grow a lot outdoors. And we're here, right here, by my collection of citrus trees. Um, these are youngish trees, but this year they are putting on a heck of a good harvest. These trees are loaded. Um, and they've been, we've already been donating them here in the local community, and it looks like we're gonna have some th for the rest of the year for donation, which is gonna be a lot of fun. As I mentioned, these trees are very easy to grow, but there is one important thing that you're gonna need to plan for. You need to be able to keep them warm during the winter time, okay? So for that reason, I recommend growing them in some sort of a portable container, something that you can handle. Um, what we do out here, we actually use our grow boxes, okay? Um, this is how we started everything with the farm, all outdoors in these grow boxes and we're able to forklift these up, pick these up with a forklift, and then bring them into my cold frames and greenhouses during the winter months. At home, you don't need to do all that. I recommend starting your trees in some kind of a easy to handle plastic container. It can be something decorative. It could be something as simple as a black nursery pot. Um, then I recommend planting your trees in a good potting soil mixture. That's important. Um, and again, I don't like to let my trees get much below 25 degrees or so. Anything lower than that and it's time for them to be moved indoors. Anything mildly around freezing, no problem. You know, even in the 30s, 29 degrees, not gonna cause an issue. You get into the mid to low 20s, it's time to protect. What I recommend is either bringing them inside of the house or into a garage. Again, you don't need to be that warm. So in most cases, you just bring them inside of a garage and that's gonna be great. I actually have a, a type of orange called a Satsuma that I've had in the same black nursery pot, a 15 gallon pot for over 15 years now, and it still gives me a ton of fruit. It's got a great crop on it this year. Many times during those years, we would get some freezing weather before the fruit was ripe. And what I would do is bring it inside my house and set it into a sunny window, and all of that fruit would go ahead and ripen uh, inside the house and that's fine. You can do that with most citrus trees. Um, once the fruit is, is developed, um, it doesn't need a lot of heat and a lot of light to, to, to finish ripening and they'll ripen indoors quite well. Here at the farm we grow limes, we grow lemons, we grow a few different types of what are called mandarin oranges which are similar to you know traditional oranges but they peel real easy. Um, and they come in many different shapes and sizes and also in taste variations. Um, they're one of my favorites to grow. All of them do really well. I do recommend getting them on a pretty regular watering schedule, uh, especially during our summer months. Most of them will probably need water at least every other day, if not every day, during the worst part of the summer. Um, getting them on some kind of a regular fertilizing regimen is a good idea starting in springtime. I always recommend the slow release granular fertilizers. You can do it organic or you can use something a, a synthetic like Osmocote. The choice is yours. Any of that works well. I think those are just more consistent and easier for the grower. You don't have to be out there mixing up you know, liquid products and having to continuously do that. And that's really all there is to know or most of what you need to know about growing citrus. They grow so well in this area. They do well in the heat and humidity, no problem. It's actually one of the fruits that the animals don't favor. Um, I have had a few bird pecks on some of my limes through the years and occasionally on an orange, but the squirrels don't even like them. And this is one of the few and only fruits I can think of that I can say that about. If you follow along with me, I want to give you a closer look at some of the trees that we're growing and point out a couple of other things you can do with your trees as well. So this is one of the trees I want to show you. This is a Myers lemon. 
and it's one of my favorite varieties of citrus to grow. As you can see, this one is getting really close to ripe. Um, and we'll talk in a few minutes about what ripens when, when in regards to citrus, but uh, the lemons are kind of a, a little bit sweet for a lemon. Still has that classic tartness that you're, that you're used to. The zest is very useful. Um, but one of the things I like best about the Myers lemon, well, first off, all citrus have a, a, a wonderful fragrant flower but these are the most spectacular. They seem to be twice as large as some of the other citrus varieties and they just have an incredible fragrance. Another thing that's really cool about them is that they're one of the only citrus that will continue to flower throughout the season. So a lot of times you will have lemons on the tree, you know, sometimes immature and sometimes even closer to, to full maturity as well as flowers. So it makes for a spectacular ornamental as well as a good useful fruit in the kitchen. So if you'll follow me over here, I want to show you some of the other trees we're growing as well. This is another one of my favorites. Um, this is a type of orange called a satsuma. Um, they're actually really popular where I grew up in South Louisiana, but they actually do great here in North Texas also, obviously. Um, they're one of the more cold hardy citrus varieties. Um, you'll hear reports of, of people taking these down you know, into the low 20s and then surviving just fine. I don't take a chance again. Um, I protect them when it gets that cold, but these little trees are amazing. Um, they grow more of a shrub-like, um, and they always have this kind of weeping characteristic because they will load up so heavily with fruit. It's hard to believe that the branches don't just snap, um, but they're amazingly strong. And I mean, each of these fruits probably weighs, you know, a quarter of a pound. Um, they get quite sizable. They're a little bit different than normal oranges, okay? Um, they ha they're much sweeter, and because of that, children really seem to enjoy them. And the other thing that they're well known for is that they peel super easily. Um, so you can just rip them off the tree and separate the rind from the fruit very, very well. Um, in addition to that, they're almost always seedless, which makes it especially good to eat. Okay, there's a lot of cool things you can do with them. There's cocktails, you can squeeze them for fresh juice. Um, you can use them, as segments of them in your favorite salad. Um, that's always popular, so it's another one of the citrus that's very versatile. Lastly, I do wanna leave you a couple more tips just to make sure you have success growing your citrus. So I've already mentioned a couple of times that you do need to have a plan to keep these things warm uh, during the coldest months of the winter. So that's first and foremost. Um, but there are a couple of insect pests that can occasionally become a problem, though not as frequent as with other uh, garden plants. Aphids can occasionally visit. They're usually not that catastrophic. Uh, they're more of a nuisance than anything, and a lot of times the ladybugs will be enough in the springtime to take care of them. Um, the one to know about that's, that's a little bit more serious than that is an insect called scale. They're a little hard-shelled insect that usually develop on the stems themselves, and those can be pretty bad. Um, what you're gonna wanna do with them is one of two things. If, if you catch it early on, you can actually physically remove them from the tree. You can just go in with your hands and pull them off. I've heard of some people taking a, uh, a Q-tip with uh, dunked in alcohol and actually using that to swab them off. Um, that's effective. If it's too far gone, if you're starting to see too many of them up and down the stems, you may need to spray something. A lot of people just use a horticultural oil, which is an all natural organic product, and that will actually suffocate them on the tree. So those are mostly the pests that you're gonna to wanna to look out for. I will also mention that there are a couple of butterflies that might lay their larvae on the leaves and they will temporarily make a snack out of them. You'll see them eating holes in the leaves and they have these big colorful looking caterpillars I don't let that bother me. I've never had them damage my tree or my crop. I let them do their thing, let them go become a cocoon and then a beautiful butterfly. I've never had an issue with that. If you're concerned, that's up to you. You can always pull them off, you can remove them or, or treat them as, as you deem necessary. I did mention briefly, uh, you do need to get them on a regular water schedule once you move them outdoors in the springtime. Um, every couple of days during the spring. Once it's summertime, just pay close attention every other day, maybe every day, depending on the containers. Um, and a little bit of fertilizer. 
That's really mostly all you're going to need to know to have success with your citrus. Um, last but not least, I want to tell you what ripens when. Uh, the first citrus to start ripening in our area are limes. Uh, they're normally going to be coming off the tree late August to early September. Okay, Right behind them, you're going to have a lot of the others. You have your lemons, your satsumas like we've mentioned, and a lot of the other mandarins. And they're all going to ripen in and around Thanksgiving time frame. So just in time for the holidays. Right behind them, when you get into December, are the classic oranges, the true oranges like the navels or some of the round oranges that you cut into slices. Um, those are going to ripen in December. And then, shortly into the new year, you're going to have some of the later oranges like the Valencias. And then last but not least is grapefruit, which a lot of times those will still be hanging in there till the early spring, late February into early March. Um, and then once the spring months hit, you look forward to all the fragrant blossoms, um, which will just knock your head off with their fragrance. I've done this for a long time, guys. I just know you're going to enjoy doing it at home. So I encourage each of you to go out there, get whichever kind of citrus you want to you start with and get growing.